my name is Saina Gideon Kipkorir. I was raised up in a church going family by a pious mother. I grew up knowing that to be right with God, I had to fulfill religious obligations such as going to church every Sunday. I later learned that not only that was enough, but that I also had to obey all the Ten Commandments perfectly. I tried but kept falling every time. I didn't know what the problem was and felt condemned and heavily burdened. Coming to high school, I went through several altar calls seeking to repair my broken state. Well, I wasn't bold enough to step forward. However, I convinced my heart that if I sincerely said the prayer in my seat after the evangelist, I would be saved too. I thought that I was, a, I was saved by merely acknowledging the fact that Jesus died for me 2,000 years ago. I lived seeking to outdo my friends in my Christianity. Nothing had happened to my heart. In fact, I continued to love the things that God hates. I was a fig tree that produces thorns. My life was marked by hypocrisy. I loved to appear righteous before men, but didn't care what I looked like when I was alone. I was like a whitewashed tomb, which outwardly appeared beautiful, but within is full of dead people's bones and all uncleanness. I loved it when people spoke and thought well of me. One day, I watched a sermon on YouTube about how a Christian is known by their fruits. This prompted me to examine myself deeply if I really bore the fruits of the Holy Spirit. The gospel was preached from Isaiah 53. I tried to convince myself that I was still a Christian, but I got a strong conviction that I was still in my sin. I felt remorseful for my deeds. It was as though my garments had been removed to leave me naked with my sins uncovered. Thanks to be to God for the evangelist who preached that I needed to repent and believe in Jesus. That it pleased God to bruise Jesus for my iniquity and that I would be forgiven by believing in him and his complete work on the cross. I cast all my sins to Christ by faith and all my burden fell and I clung on to Jesus as my only hope. Indeed, nothing in my hands I bring, simply to his cross I cling. My life would then completely turn around as I began to have a desire to know the word of God and to do his will. It is his grace to me that trained me and continues to train me to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions and to live a self-controlled, upright, and a godly life in this present age. As I continue in my journey of faith, I continue to see more of my wretchedness and Christ becomes more precious to me. Indeed, I strive to count every gain I have according to the flesh as loss that I may have the fullness of Christ. As I stand here today, Jesus is all I have. For apart from him, I am dead. And in him I now live and walk by faith. I believe that the Lord will uphold me by his grace and mercy and deliver me home to the eternal life that he has promised all those who have believed in him. I praise the Lord for the wonderful promises he has given in his word. And I'm so thankful for the means of grace he has provided for my spiritual growth, the scriptures, the prayer, the church, and the fellowship of brethren the Spirit applying them all on us. Let's pray for Gideon. Lord, we thank you for you have as Gideon has saved what is removed the heart of the tomb and replaced it with the heart of God that responds to spiritual needs. 
Pray for him, Lord, that you may set him on the highway of righteousness. That you may go with him, Lord, that you may be with him, that you may strengthen him day by day to live the Christian life. Put him off the old self and put him on the new man after the, uh, the image of his Savior. Help him, Lord, not to uh, trust his arm flesh, but grant him as he has confessed to, uh, to cling to Christ, to depend on Christ, to trust on Christ, not to give up or to give in, but to live in such a manner that brings glory to me. Now, Lord, as he is baptized, please make his baptism means of grace by which you will uh, minister grace to him, even as he is assured of dying with Christ and being raised with Christ to the newness of life. And at, this, at the same time, Lord, as he ministers to Gideon, you will also convince those believers who are here and are yet to know, uh, they are yet to be baptized, to also uh, seek to be baptized in obedience to your command. And for those who are yet to know your saving power, may they see this and know that your power to save is still present in us, is pre still present here on earth, that they may also come to Christ and be saved. Thank you, O Lord, that you are the Savior of sins. Thank you, Lord, that you are willing to save. And thank you, Lord, that you are able to save to the uttermost those who draw near to you by faith. This year is Lord, for we ask in Christ. Amen. And so, as you have been out, if you're out there and you have put your trust in the Lord, make it known that you also may be baptized. And if you're there and you have not repented of your sins and put your trust in the Lord, remember that you must seek the Lord while he may be found and call on him while he is near. Gideon, because you have repented your sins and put your trust in the Lord, I now baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.